I welcome you once again to the month of April. That is my month. Amen. Praise the Lord. The theme for this month is fear not. And our text for the month of April is Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 1 to 7. Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 7. But now, thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and ye that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the river they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be bound, neither does she flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the only one of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for their, thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not keep back. Bring thy son from far, and thy daughter from the hand of the heart, even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him and I have made him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. But this morning, we are going to have a subtopic. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Praise the Lord. What I'm trying to say, fear in itself is alone. But God has not given us the spirit to fear. So there is something called the spirit of fear. Praise the Lord. You know, there is fear. And there is spirit of fear. You know, normally, I mean, if something wants to happen and you are afraid or something, that doesn't mean that you have that spirit. Praise the Lord. That doesn't mean that you have the spirit of fear. You are just... just you know, your brain just reacts to things that want to happen. Because I need to explain that. But for Jacob, you know, because of the past life of Jacob. And that is why when you see Isaiah 43, you see, but now. That tells you something has happened in the past. Amen. For Jacob that we know, you know, he collected his brother's birthright. right? You know, he's, I mean, he, he used... You know, I mean, for one night to get blessing from his dad. You know, he has done so many bad things. Praise the Lord. So all the life of Jacob, he was living in what? In fear that one day Esau will come and kill him. Praise the Lord. So it was that he was going about with that kind of mindset. And that is why here in Isaiah, we didn't really need to understand the reason why God now sent a word to him. He said, but now, oh Jacob, now things have changed. And as many people that are living in fear, things has, will change for you in the mighty name of Jesus. But for today, I want us to look at 2 Timothy 1, 7. Okay, so they say second, I put first. You know, when you are rushing at times. 1, 7, okay. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Praise the Lord. So, if God has not given us the spirit of fear, then where do we get that spirit from? Praise the Lord. Paul is writing to Timothy here. Timothy is one of the sons of Paul. When I mean sons of Paul, is the spiritual sons of Paul. Praise the Lord. 
Because when you see all the writings of Paul, you always refer to Timothy. You know, but Timothy has now become so big. He himself is now a pastor. Amen. He has a lot of responsibility. But people who know him very well, like Paul, knows Timothy. That Timothy is not stable in some ways. Praise the Lord. Like some of us, we are not stable in some way. You don't see things the way people see things. You have allowed fear to be cloud you. There are some very positive aspects of fear. Praise the Lord. But there are some negative aspects of fear. Amen. But this morning, I want to talk about the negative aspect of, of, of fear, which Paul was referring to in the case of Timothy. God has not given us or you the spirit of fear. The fear of Paul is referring to here in Hebrew world is called the Leah. But the other fear that we, and the, this the Leah appear only once in the Bible in the contents which Paul is now using it. But the other fear in the Bible is called Yeha. That is the Hebrew word for those. So they have two different meaning. Now, what are you saying, Pastor, this morning? Is to tell us that, like I said before, there is fear that stands on its own. There is spirit of fear, which is called the Leah. The spirit that I'm referring to here can be turned into English as the spirit of cowardice or cowardice. Or the spirit of timidity. Praise the Lord. When, uh, when I first heard the word of, uh, I mean, a coward spirit, you know, that somebody is coward, it was while I was growing up, and, you know, boys will always be boys. You know, when we once saw a lady and we want to go and, and discuss with the lady, you go, it takes one step, you take two steps, you run back. Praise the Lord. So there was this lady that he has expected me to come and even say something. One day she just met me, you know, I was going somewhere and said, you are a coward. Praise the Lord. I look at myself and say, me? I'm a coward. He said, you are a coward. You, are, you cannot even speak. Praise the Lord. So there are some coward spirit, you know, that people carry all around. around. You know, they can't make decision on time. You know, they can't go far. They don't want to risk anything. They don't want to be insulted. They just want to stay in their corner and feel cool there. You know, they cannot try anything beyond their power. And that is the spirit that we are, we are talking about. And it's another word is to be timid. You know, they are so shy to a fault. You understand that they don't even want to relate with people. They just want to be on their own. The spirit always possesses people. It affects their mindset. Praise the Lord. It affects their mindset. You, you tell them, let's drive to, to, to Dallas. Like my brother announced for the convention. They, driving? No, 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 no. They will have to think about four or five accidents on the road. Praise the Lord. Ah, before you go, go to get to dating, you will have had one. You know, and it is such a, I mean, they believe. It makes them to believe that, no, 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 no. Driving is a dangerous thing. And they don't even want to do it. It takes over their life. It is the spirit that, that come over you to make you think of something that are not there. You know, they will always be thinking of something. They, are, they call them paranoia or spirit. Praise the Lord. They are paranoid with little things. A brother of mine came to my house in Nigeria and said, you want to sleep with me in there? You know, I said, no problem. We are, I mean, he lives in Boston there. But when he entered the house, I just went, me, I just went to bed and in the middle of the night, my brother will walk around that house 
check every door whether every door is locked praise the lord how can a guest who comes to your house you know and is not fearing for something that is not there i cannot really understand he will check every door make sure every door is locked you understand and one day i was i mean i got baffled i said look if you are so fearful like this you know because he has a mindset that coming to nigeria you know even anywhere you are you are not safe praise the lord and that spirit take over the mindset of so many people some people will say ah, i cannot go back to that country because if i go back there i was told that they they hit people there and they believe it so it's a bad spirit that a lot of people have been battling. It makes them believe that something is not just happening or going to happen. It gives you a sense of inferiority. They look at themselves and they compare themselves with other people. And they feel inferior immediately. You are happy you buy a car. They are not happy to share that joy with you. That is a spirit that we are talking about. You buy a house, they are saying, look, you are just wasting money. You know, they don't rejoice with people. You wonder what is going on. You better don't tell them if you pass exam. You understand? Because they too, they cannot sit for one and pass. They feel inferior intimidated in their own corner and that is the spirit that we are talking about this morning it's a cowardly spirit it's a timidity spirit when the spirit come upon upon you, them they look down at themselves i can't make it praise the lord they always tell them things negative things i cannot make it make you to feel small about yourself they feel so small so insignificant about themselves so if you you go to them and you are sharing something big you understand it's like you are just wasting your time they cannot attempt it they feel contented with small things give them just a corner you know, they cannot, they don't want to fight over, I mean, when they win, by the time they are fighting you, they are fighting you over small things. Praise the Lord. Things that you will say, is that the cause of the problem? That is what they do. The sense of inferiority is the sense, is the spirit of fear. It gives you sense that you are inadequate. I am not capable. They gave them an assignment. You know, go and do this thing. The first thing they will tell you is that I cannot do it. Praise the Lord. They have not tried. But in your shirt, you say, I cannot do it. For somebody that is grown, and say, but in your shirt, and need telling you that I cannot do it. You know, they don't try anything. Don't ever, ever bother to give them a jacket. Praise the Lord. Because you have caused them more problem. You understand? He tells you, he tells them that they are not able to do it. He gives a sense of, if I do nothing. You know, you give them an assignment. Instead of them to do it, it's like the, the story of the, uh, the, the one that collected only one talent. And he go and eat it. You know, he dug the floor ground and he hid it there. No action. Praise the Lord. They don't even want to engage in anything. It makes them sick. It makes them feel inferior or inadequate. It gives them a sense of no action. Let's look at four major causes of the spirit of inferiority. Number one is this, the presence of their handicap. Praise the Lord our handicap some of us will we will, will feel like that and the same thing timothy was nursing here 
Timothy is having a stomach ulcer. Praise the Lord. So he was going about with an ailment in his stomach, in his body. You know, Paul too was asked some ailment in his body. He prayed to God and said, God, take it away. You know, three times God did not answer Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Praise the Lord. But now, Timothy now take up that spirit, you know, and he now said, you know, he was thinking that because of the horse, everybody is seeing what, you know, I'm going through. Praise the Lord. So he started to live in fear. You know, and some of us, we are like that. We have some handicap, but we have allowed that handicap to cripple us. To make us not to do what God has called us to do. You know, you are hiding. You know, you are feeling insecure. You know, inferior because of that handicap. Today, God is going to deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 23 just to tell you the helmet of Timothy he said drink no longer water this is what some people some bad people quote say drink no longer water but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake that thy often infirmity <laughs> praise the Lord you know when you see some drunkard they will say go to this bars praise the Lord they want to refer to Timothy the thing that I, I say, I pray to God that God should give you the same thing that is doing Timothy. Praise the Lord. If you want to live on wine, just say, God, give me a stomach ulcer so I can be drinking wine. Praise the Lord. So, that, so you, you get the, the, the story now. Timothy has a stomach ulcer and he allowed that to cripple him. And that is why Paul has to tell him again. Look, I, say, I mean, you are saved by God. You don't have to allow this thing. You know, don't allow fear. God has not given you that spirit. As many that have some handicap in the house, God will heal you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Timothy was battling with stomach problem. He had an infection in his intestine. Timothy is sickly people. He's very sick. So they don't want to engage. This might not be a physical illness because at times some of us will back off. Oh, lack of education. I didn't mean I have a master's degree. You know, I did mean I was able to do it. And that is some of the things that some of us are battling with. Praise the Lord. Some of us are battling with financial handicap. I wish I have money. I wish I want to do this thing. You know, so that they don't try. They always wish. Praise the Lord. Marital, marital problem. Now marital stress. Issues. You know, it can be your own handicap. You are looking at yourself. Say, age is not on my side. You know, you are taking that age as an handicap. Praise the Lord. And each of us have dealt with one of these handicap. Praise the Lord. Some of us are still battling with one now. Because of finance, you don't want to do anything. Praise the Lord. You feel that, look, you cannot move forward. But my prayer for you today, that you are moving forward. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two. Persistent of doubt. Praise the Lord. Some of us, we call ourselves Christian. But anything you hear, you don't believe. Amen. Amen. You live in doubt all the days of your life. Praise the Lord. You are, you are in fact, when, when, when people say something, you say, no, 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 it cannot happen. Amen. The Bible says, fear not, say, I will fear. Praise the Lord. Amen. They are live in doubt. They don't want anything. And they, that makes them to believe. That makes them to believe that, no, there is no way out. They hear a voice in their head. Telling them that, look, don't listen. Some of us, if they, I mean, we are all here, we are in good clothes. If you see something that is going on in the head of some people, you understand? If God opened our eyes to see, 
You know how some people are thinking. You see, God, help me. Praise the Lord. You know, because their head is full of all kind of thought. Doubt. Persistent. You know? They are, you're paranoid. They are paranoid in every sense of life. Let's open our Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 10. And see an example of Timothy there too. When Paul was wanted to send Timothy to some people, he mentioned the attribute of Timothy. Praise the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 16, 10, he said, Now, if Timothy come, see that, that he may be with you without what? Without fear. For he is worked the work of the Lord as I also do. They are introducing him, but they are carrying his attitude to it. It's like me telling anybody that is going to above my brother and I say, hey, when my brother come to your house, you know, make sure that every door is locked. Amen. You know, they are just, just paranoid, you know. And that is what Paul was saying here. He said, make sure that this guy is comfortable. He has an ailment that is no sin. You understand? And that is what his thought is all about every day. But I can tell you, he's a child of God. Amen. That is what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians here. Timothy always lives in fear. The persistence of your doubt. Number three. The pressure of expectation. That is the cause of the spirit. Negative expectation can paralyze you. Likewise, positive expectation does the same. What people expect from you can make you to be inactive. You look at yourself. You say, ah, go and sell two houses. Or like some people that have worked in Nigerian bank. Praise the Lord. He said, go and look for customer that will bring 100 million. Praise the Lord. Some people will be going from office to office looking for people that, how can people will not steal? You know, because if a banker is coming to me and say, ah, well, come and put your money here. So when the money enter the banks, they will not even see anything. Praise the Lord. So it can paralyze you. Expectation, high expectation will make some people to say, no, I cannot just handle this. And they were shut down. And that expectation happened to some firstborn child. How many firstborn child are in the house? You are firstborn of your family. You could relate with this thing. They have a lot of expectation on you. You know, you have to do this. Your brothers or your sister are looking at you. You know, everything they are make they make reference to your life. You know, as if you cannot think on your own. Praise the Lord. High expectation. And that is what they do for firstborn children. They say, you see your mate. Look at all your mates. They have graduated. Hey, look at all your mates. They have A's. They don't, they make high expectation. Amen. Especially if their father or their parent happen to be a professional. Like a doctor. Hey, they want their child to be a doctor too. Praise the Lord. High expectation. If they are lawyers, they want their, daughter, their son to be lawyer. Amen. Some people will say, I want somebody to start carrying my name. Amen. High expectation. And pressure of high expectation, you know, can cause somebody to be paranoid. Number four, the persecution of opponent. Uh, this has happened to me severally. You know, when you are in business, like, church, you know, church is a business. How many of you know church is a business? Church is a business. When you are in a business and you are not making good progress, the tendency to look at ah, whether they are my opponent, they are making progress there, is always there. Amen. So pressure from opposition is another thing. Then how does this fear work? Or how can we get rid of this fear? Psalm 55. Psalm 55. We are going to read 3 to 8. Psalm 55, 3 to 8. Our time is gone, but we are going to rush there. 
Are you all there? Okay, it's there on the board. Because of the voice of their enemy, because of their oppression of the wicked, for they have cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hurt me. My heart is sore pain within me, and terror of death are falling upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has taken overwhelm me. And I said, look at number six. I want you to paint that number six, because that is where we are going to take our talks. He said, and I said, oh, that I have wings, that like a do, for then I will fly away and be at rest. You know? You know, and be at what? At rest. Lo, then I will wander far off and remain in the wilderness. N number eight, he said, I will esteem my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Three things we are going to take out of that flight. Some people want to run away, they run away to avoid problems. Praise the Lord. That is what David says. He says, I wish I can have a way so I can fly away. You know, and forget about all these problems. You know, they just want to run away from that problem. They want to leave everything and say, look, 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 look. I want to be at peace. But they are temporary peace. I want to tell you something this morning. Problem don't solve problems. Praise the Lord. Running away don't solve problems. Amen. Because if you run, you can fly into the moon. Your problems still remain here on earth. Amen. That is why I, I, a lot of people do that most of the time. They just want to leave it and say, well, this thing is too hard for me. I, can, I will not be able to do this. Less them. They don't want, they can't face problems. They want to check out of the country like Andrew. You know, every country they have been. They have been to Saudi Arabia. They have been to South Africa. They have been everywhere. You understand? They just move from country to countries. You know, they are checking out. And that will not solve. Problems don't solve themselves. Say to your neighbor. Problems don't solve problems. Running away is not of God. It is the spirit of fear. Number two. He said, I will wander off. Right? Seven say, Lord, then will I wander off and remain in the wilderness? You know? Moving from places to places. Right? That is why you see a lot of people moving from churches to churches. Praise the Lord. They thought that, oh, in this church, I don't like this sister. So let me move to another church. Praise the Lord. In this place, I don't like them. Let me go to another place. You know, they wander from one place to the other. You know, they are never satisfied. They will never settle down in a place. You know, they will always find something wrong in every place they have been. And that is the spirit of fear. Some people, they will hold money in this church. They will go to another church. They will go and hold money. Praise the Lord. And they will be telling you, in this church, we are not growing. That is the excuse they always give. They say, yeah, we are not growing. They will not tell you that they have put their hands into things that they are not supposed to. The fear of death will now be pursuing them everywhere they are going. That is their life. They are wonder, they wonder away. Number three, because of time, they won't just want to escape. He said, For lo, I will hasten my escape from the wind, the storm, and tempest. Praise the Lord. And you know what these people do? Some of them they go back to Egypt. They, they go back to their previous life. They started drinking alcohol. Amen. They started living careless life. Because they just want something to take away that sorrow. Take away that, uh, that pain. They cannot sleep without using medication. Amen. 
they get so much hook on drug that Lord, it now take over their life. They are looking for a way of escape. They got hook on drug. But God has not called us to escape. God never promised us a trouble-free life. Amen. In Psalm 34, verse 13, uh, verse 19, in Psalm 34, verse 19, see, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. So it is not one affliction we are talking about here. He say many. So if you are the, on the righteous side of God, you will have problems. Praise the Lord. But one thing that is for certain is that God is going to do what? He's going to deliver you out of them all. So it is not about running. It is not about running. Don't complicate your problem. The more you keep on running, the more you are, you are still going. The problem will still remain. The person that holds money here today and runs to another church, he's still a debtor. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm. But if you are stay and explain himself, you understand? His debt can be forgiven. That is the truth. So a lot of us complicate our problems. We just take things and say, well, a way of escape is if they don't see me, they won't ask me for the money I am owing. What are the solutions to this? First Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. Uh, sorry, 2 Timothy. Now I remember. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. So our text. So that is where we are going. Verse 3 to 7. They say, I thank God who I serve my forefather with pure with pure conscience and without chasing I am I remembrance of thee in my prayer night and day greatly desiring to see him be mindful of my tears that I may be filled with joy at the when I call to remembrance the unfringed faith that is in thee which dwell first in my grandmother Louise and my mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is also in this. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that though thou stir up the gift of God which in thee by putting on of hand, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. You have to remember your story. Remember what? Everyone has a story of conversion. Is that true of us? You know where you are before. You know where God picked you from. God who is faithful to you at that point of time is still faithful till today. Praise the Lord. You have to remember your story. Because when you remember your story... You know that there is no spirit that is capable to cripple you. God who has saved you in time past will save you now and he will save you forever. You have to do what? Remember your story. If Egypt is good, God will not have delivered the children of Israel. Although they see it as good, they are eating cucumbers, right? But they are using them as slaves. But God said, no, no, no. I have a better way for you. You have to remember your story. Because the children of Israel failed to remember their story. And that is why they perish in the wilderness. And in your own case, you will not perish. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because you will remember the faithfulness of God. In all that you do. Remember the gift of God upon your life. Everyone has a gift. Is that not so? Like I said to you, faith is a gift. Is that not so? And God give everyone the same what? The same measure of faith. You have to remember that God has given you something. You have to remember that God has given you something. That is what Paul is trying to tell Timothy here. He said, look, you have to remember all these things. You have to bring it to remember. Number three is that you can always tear up. Stir up your gift. 
Because if you stir up your gift, you know, it will swallow up those things that you are not able to do. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the gift of a man will make a way for him. Right? Now, let me tell you something. Have you ever seen people who has one handicap in one area? Maybe they are blind. But you see, God is a God of compensation. Amen? God will compensate them more in earrings. Have, have you noticed? Although they are, they are blind, they cannot see. But in hearing, they hear more than you that you can see and you can hear. Because God will open their ears and say, look, look, look. You know, snake doesn't have hand. Amen. But he hears any noise. Whatever he hears, he reacted to it. So when storm is coming, you know, storm cannot swallow up state snake. That is it. Because before the storm comes, he has gone. Amen. He will have heard that you know, there is rumbling. So God always use the gift that you have to compensate you in the area where you are not good enough. Praise the Lord. How many of us know that there are 11 players on the field of football? But if I tell you, if I ask you, who is the best player in the world? What name will you mention to me? Ronaldo. Right? Or Messi. Okay. Now, I'm going to explain this so you will understand. There are 11 pos positions on the field of player. Messi or Ronaldo, they are only going to play one position. Is that not so? The keeper is there. Right? To keep the goal. The one that the attackers are there to attack. You know, how come now you are now telling me that Messi or Ronaldo, they are the best player? If the keeper don't keep well, will they win? Praise the Lord. Because they steer up their own gift. And their own gift swallow up the other 11, or nine, 10, I mean, 10, 11 players or 10 other players. So when people, they are playing, they are only seeing what? They are only seeing Messi. They are only seeing Ronaldo. When you stir up the gift of God upon your life, people will not see your hints or inadequacy. It will swell, uh, swallow up, you know, whatever you cannot do. And that is why what God has given us has given for. You can be 100,000 in a place, but if you allow the gift of God to make a way for you, you stir it up. You know, you will dust all the people who have been occupying the seat before you. Why did they call the name of Jesus? Is he the first apostle? No, 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 no. He's not the first one that will come. But he tear up the gift of God upon his life. Despite the fact that he is God. You know, he was able to do things that others cannot do. And I pray that every fear that is crippling you till now. They've begun in the mighty name of Jesus. Every handicap that you are not seeing at this moment that is making you to feel timid or coward, you know, towards running this race the way you ought to run, God Almighty will take it away in the mighty name of Jesus.